Hello, welcome to the second video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to get better control over our instances by playing around with the parameters which have been put in place. So let's take a look at just our standard material right here. So I'm going to grab this material. I'm going to open it up in the content browser, double click. And we can see right away we have uh, a preview of our material, which has included reflections. It looks really good. And then over here on the left, we have all the parameters which help affect the look of our surface. As you can see, there are many different parameters and they all have a specific function. So I'm going to go over these one by one and how to go about changing some of the more advanced functions. So right away we have uh, ambient occlusion. So this is being plugged straight into the ambient occlusion in a material. There's no other effects to it. So if you want to plug in ambient occlusion, all you have to do is click on ambient occlusion, make sure it's set to one so that you have a full value. Uh, click on your AO texture. And this is just a default texture. It doesn't have anything included. Uh, what you'll have to do is go into your textures and I don't have an example right here, but all I'd have to do is click and drag my AO map straight into this box. And then finally, this is the most important part, is this right here, S underscore custom AO. So anything, any parameter, which is scalar based, that has an S underscore and then something else means this is a switch. So there's a couple different ways to enable switches in a material system, but using a scalar parameter makes basically the most efficient way of going about this. Uh, using a standard bowl switch will help uh, clean things up, but would also rebuild the materials every, every time you changed it around. So that is not the best way to go about. So if we want to affect our animals by plugging in a texture, we have to make sure its amount is set to one, and then we have to come down to the switch and then enable this as well. Zero is off, one is enabled. So as you can see, we don't have much of an effect on here because the standard texture doesn't have much uh, contrast in it, but uh, trust me, it is working. So to disable that, I just can hit to zero and I can close these up. And I'll close AO and we'll focus on some other layers. So the base is what's going to be driven underneath the flake pattern. So if you zoom in really, really closely, you can see that the, there are individual flakes, these tiny little pixels, and then there's a base, which is a nice flat color on the background. So when we're playing around with the base and the base color and the base multicolor, we're going to be affecting just this background color, not the flakes. So it's really fun to do this. Um, I can just click on the base color standard and then click on this value and start changing it instantly. Now this is the power of instancing materials because not only do you get a, a real-time preview right here in your window, you can also see that it's working real-time in the editor. This is a very, very cool, very, very fast way of creating uh, exactly what you want for your artists. So that's just the base color. It's really simple. You can see if you zoom up really quick, we actually have some weird things going on here because the base color is not a complementary color to the flake color. So an aggregate of that is a different color altogether. So I'm going to change this back to blue for now. And then this value right here is the metallic value for the base. So if you wanted to pull down your base metallic value, and typically car paint materials don't have a full metallic flake uh, underneath. So you can see I can drag that down and you can see right away that brings less metallic value to your surface. We can also change the Fresnel color. This is really useful if you were going to be using a pearlescent type material. So I can change this to something really contrasty, red. And then I have to make sure that my switch is enabled, S underscore base Fresnel color. I'll type in a one here. And you can see right away, we get a much different looking surface. And once again, this is all happening in real time so we can play around with it right away. By default, it's set to black. And I'm just going to disable that real quickly. 
Oh, before I do, actually. There's also one more function, which is really nice. It's the base, for now, color power. So this, this um, value is being plugged straight into the for now of this masking system. So you can start playing around with it quickly, and you can see that you get a really nice gradient on your for now based on this value. All right, so that's base color. And base multicolor. So this is where things start getting really interesting. So you'll see that there's many different parameters, but there's two at the bottom which we're most interested in. Base multicolor, the switch. So I'm going to enable this. And you'll see right away that we get this checker pattern. And we can see the color mask right here is what's driving this. So if I was to click on my base color B, which is the blue channel on my uh, texture right here, I can click on this parameter and I can change it to anything I want because what it's looking for, the masking system is looking for the blue channel from your texture and it doesn't care what it's being rendered on as the material, it's just looking for this mask so I can change this color to anything I want. And that goes for all three channels, they can all be affected to render their own color. So this is really useful when you have uh, a couple different designs but you want to keep changing the color around. It gives you a lot of power to play around. So once again I'm going to set this all to default. And I'm going to leave actually one of these a different color. There's one more thing we want to look at here. Oh and also you can change the metallic value for each one of these as well. The last thing we're going to look at here is the base color from texture. So instead of applying a masking system, which you can affect the color as up, if you have your base color in a texture, it's got complex gradients, you just want that exact texture onto your base, you just click on this switch, type in a 1, and now the base color is exactly what's coming out of this texture, so you can drag anything in here. So you can see that this gives you a lot of power for uh, soft gradients, kind of low rider type paint schemes. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is the clear coat. So with this method, we're using the clear coat shading model, which is PBR based, and using its captures from one of these. So we have a couple of parameters which we can use to affect that. Uh, clear coat value means the clear coat value, this is a straight value in the material system. So clear coat one means that there is a clear coat. If we type this into zero, we effectively see no reflections from the clear coat. And then this is basically giving you a soft material from your base coat and your flake coat. So I'll put that back to one. And then you can see that we have a couple different things that help with this surface. We can have the roughness, so we can roughen it up a little bit. There is that grunge texture I was talking about in the last video, it can be applied here. And then we have a contrast for that as well. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is the flake system. So this is really exciting because it helps us change the look of our materials by uh, a large margin. So let's take a look at the flake scale. This is the scale of the flakes in proportion to the rest of the surface. So the higher the number, the more repeating the texture. I can bring this up to a much larger flake size. And depending on how your UVs are scaled, this will help you dial in the right look for your material. Flake size is the actual size of the individual flakes. So if I change this to a higher number, you'll see that past 20, there isn't much of a difference. But if you bring that down under 20, you'll see that the flakes start to get much smaller. And then we also have the flake bump. So like I was saying before, this system, the clear coat method, doesn't allow you to have two different bump values. So I left the bump value in just in case you wanted to add a little bit of glint. So I can start bringing that up and you can see that 
straight away we start getting popping highlights. Unfortunately, unfortunately though, that also affects the clear coat. So you can see around the edges it's starting to get much more noisy and that's because it's applying this uh, flake value to the entire surface. So generally I use uh, zero bump to negate any of those, uh, those weird features. So we can also change the flake normal map. So you can plug in any normal map that you'd like. And then you can change stuff like the roughness. So if I zoom out real quick and I start playing around with the roughness of this metallic value, you'll see that that also greatly affects how the surface looks. So this is just affecting the roughness of those tiny little flakes of metal. And then full flake. This is something that's more, it makes more sense than the other materials. Because what it does is basically masks everything that's not flake. So it's basically giving you flake value across the entire spectrum. You can see we still see individual flakes. And that's something that we'll talk about next. So flake color light. We can see that we have a flake color light amount. This is the lighter color flakes that you see here. So this gives you a little bit control over like a higher value flake if you want kind of fake glint. See, I can pull that down. So this gives you a different color of flake if you'd like. We change to anything you like. Generally, it's best to have a lighter variation of your base color or your other flake color. And that would be right here. So this is just changing the color of those flakes. We can also look at the Fresnel color of the flakes. So this is the same thing as the base. You can change it to a different color. Come down to the switch and enable that. And you can see now we get pearlescence values uh, on just the individual flakes, which is pretty interesting. So the flake system also has the same multicolor system as the base. So I can click on that real quick, make sure I enable it. And actually I'll play around with the parameters first. Oh, reversed. And you can see just like before, we can click on these values and start playing around with them. And then same as before, you can grab the actual values from the texture right here. All right, so the last couple of things we can see right here is the reflection normal. So this is the normal map that's being applied to the entire surface. So if I wanted to play around with that, I could plug in my own custom normal map. And this would be useful if you're using low poly assets and have high value as our high value normal map data applied to it. So if you want higher creases and stuff like that, um, you plug that right in here. And we'll bring up this value to one. And I have the normal map, I'm sorry, the normal map from the carbon fiber here. So you can see that it obviously is a little bit weird. So this normal map is being applied throughout all of the layers of paint. The clear coat, the base, the flake, everything. And just above that, we have the orange peel mount. So this is the standard orange peel that you see on cars. Um, you have a slider here to affect the strength and then the repeat. Once again, this just helps you dial in the, the look of your surface on individual assets. So the very last thing is the rust system. And this is something that's going to have its own video because it's a little bit more complex because it's based off of our text color. All right, so that was a general overview of the the paint system, if we take a look at the carbon fiber, we'll see that it has very, very similar setup. There is carbon fiber values, which you can change. You can change the repeat. And then you have roughness over this channel right here. So this is a lerp built in. 
to give us the carbon fiber look without a normal map. And then you can see uh, clear coat is pretty much the same. Color, so multicolor on the carbon fiber is changing the actual fiber color. So if I enable this, um, there's two different versions. Single color is just going to give you one color across the board. So all your fibers will be the same color. And if I enable multicolor, that's going to give me control over both weaves. And you can change this to anything you'd like. Carbon fiber is getting more complex these days, so the more we control we have over that, I think the better. Of course, normal maps are the same. There's a normal map uh, value for the carbon fiber. If you want to have kind of a, a thinner color uh, or a thinner value of clear coat, you could bump this up to make it look like a rougher carbon fiber. And then you have a couple different other textures. The flank grunge is helping the grunge on the uh, clear coat. And then a custom, custom normal map as well for the entire system. And the last one we're going to look at is the glass. And it's very similar as well. We can, we're pretty familiar with all this stuff already. We can change stuff like the base color. It's got Fresnel as well, multicolor. Uh, transfer transparency and refract Fresnel. So this is the Fresnel value of the transparency and reflect, which you can play around with. And reflection grunge, normal maps. By now you kind of get an idea of how to use these systems. The most important takeaway from this video is if you're starting to play around with parameters and they're not affecting anything, you have to make sure that this switch is in fact enabled. All right, that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about the difference between the parameters in this group and the parameters in the more advanced materials. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.